Ladies and gentlemen, a new age is among us. Gone are the days where cute protagonists just wanted to be strong or become the Pirate King or Hokage. Now their main motivation is stronger than anything we've seen before. I mean, there's nothing more inspiring. <laughs> So for this past month, I've been catching up on Chainsaw Man and a couple of other things I'm going to mention in this video, both the anime and manga. And honestly, I don't know why I haven't caught up on this sooner. Like I've just, I don't know how I've done this. I mean, trying to get a career, like fuck that. He's got a chainsaw in his head. So in case you haven't realized, this video is about Chainsaw Man. So I'm gonna give my opinion on it and what I've kind of picked up from it. And if you haven't read or watched Chainsaw Man, I highly recommend you do so. And I'm going to tell you why. Or rather, it's not just Chainsaw Man that people love, but rather the author. I mean, love him, you know, hate him. Be concerned for him. Tatsuki Fujimoto, the author, actually got into illustrating manga through his education in the Yamagata prefecture where he studied oil painting. I mean, another thing he's worked on is Fire Punch. Um, Jesus Christ, Fire Punch. I mean, I thought Jinji Ito was bad. <laughs> that guy's tame as fuck. I mean, you can't really talk about Fujimoto without mentioning Fire Punch. It, I mean, what can I say? It, it's a rite of passage <laughs> into his fucking Fujiverse. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be brief. Um, if you like dogs, which most people do, you'll have a great time because there's loads of cute dogs and, um, yeah, things. So he started off doing some one-shots, um, specifically for Shonen Punch, where he actually started to get recognised by some pretty big players. I'm talking Sui Ishida, who wrote Tokyo Ghoul and the co-creators of One Punch Man. I mean, this guy was... he was getting some traction. I think the big players were starting to notice, and even the general public, like, it was clear to see that Fujimoto had a very distinct style. In fact, a lot of his work is illustrated in a Korean style, meaning it's derived from Korean visual influences, as opposed to Japanese, which you'd more likely expect in a Japanese manga. I mean, he even illustrated Dragon Ball, which is, you know, that's pretty sweet. See, the author himself is a really interesting character. I mean, I know Yamaguchi doesn't like showing her face. In fact, a lot of mangakas just sort of prefer, like, having an alias or just completely covering their physical selves in order to just generally have a bit of privacy from the general public. I mean, Yamaguchi's on a frog shit, so you gotta respect that. But the reason Fujimoto doesn't show his face <laughs> is is quite funny because it actually came out a little while back in an interview. He doesn't show his face to anyone because he's literally scared of getting killed by his fans. <laughs> and this is because he receives a lot of death threats from fans when certain characters actually die in the anime and slash manga. And that's <laughs> it's crazy to think about, to be honest. I mean, imagine like building a world and actually writing characters, and just because you kill someone off, you get death threats back when it's your work. <laughs> like, that's insane. And I'm not being funny, but JK Rowling killed like some of the best characters in Harry Potter, and she's still going on with her remarks. See, this is the slight complication with Chainsaw Man. People die a lot. This series is like the binary opposite of fairy tale. And that is a good thing. Kinda. I'm not gonna overpraise anything if it does have flaws. I mean, literally everything does. And, you know, people do have their certain issues with the manga slash anime, which are completely understandable. I mean, a lot of people dislike the pacing issues. I mean, Denji as a whole can be quite a compelling character to some people, whether it be his motivations or just the way he's written. Like, it may not just resonate with people. And his character didn't with me at first, but that's kind of the beauty of working in a manga slash anime format. It's a long format. See, in terms of character development, like, each person can be fleshed out in a massive runtime, as opposed to, like, traditional novels or films where it's, it's quite a condensed amount of time to actually, you know, establish a character or make people connect with them in a certain way. And that's why a lot of people actually prefer books over movies, including myself, because it just adds so much more context to the world building. Same thing for TV shows. I mean, some of the most beloved characters are the ones you can see grow over a great period of time. And I've genuinely come to like Denji like so much more alongside like everyone in the series, especially after the bomb girl arc with Reize. I mean, it of course transcends into other amazing arcs where we can see everyone grow as we would expect with so much crazy shit going on. I wouldn't say there's any filler in Chainsaw Man. I mean, each arc, you know, presents its own issues as it should, but in terms of the gaps in between, they're just, there isn't. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just constantly propelling the narrative forward. I mean, when you're reading this, there's like genuinely no time to take a breather. So if you like calmer moments and, you know, cute little fillers, just be aware that things can get wild and occasionally like really hard to follow, but it's all good content. It's not filler. 
it's just filling. And because the series in itself is just so crazy, I would honestly describe the narrative as just a crescendo, just a constant upwards, like, non-stop <laughs> adventure to, obviously, the Gun Devil arc, which is just absolutely amazing. Now, for those who are wondering what a Gun Devil is, uh, essentially, our characters are positioned in the public safety unit, ran by, um, Makima. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she, she's, she's interesting. And they work on exterminating devils, which is associated with specific aspects of life. And the more these aspects are traditionally feared, the stronger the associated devil is. So say you have like, I don't know, a broccoli devil. <laughs> and then you have like a sword devil. Obviously the sword devil is going to be way more powerful because it's a sword. <laughs> Our protagonist Denji fuses with the Chainsaw Devil, who you'd expect to be scary in its own form, but uh, Ponchito is just... it's a blessing. <laughs> He's so cute. But he isn't actually that scary, because people have just generally come to fear chainsaws less in this universe. Yet, nonetheless, he is still very powerful. I found this plot device, like, ingenious, because it's not given us enemies just for the sake of it. I mean, take Demon Slayer, the villains are based on their own life story and characteristics. It's more personalised, and each villain has their own story. Now imagine each villain has their own story, but their existence in itself is a reflection of human society, and what we perceive to be universally feared. And what we perceive to be universally feared, which brings along a lot of philosophical undertones. And that is just... it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that is what you're given. Now, imagine some devils can offer a trade with humans to form a type of pact, an eye for an eye, in order to help and sustain each other. And this in itself brings more personification to each and every devil in question, because each of them has their own, you know, goal in life, and, you know, what they want to do and what they want to achieve. And obviously we have Ponchita, who... I can't get over how sweet he is. <laughs> And I'm sorry, but th this is so engaging and just such a clever world building technique, which just honestly keeps you so engaged. Now, here's the other reason I find Chainsaw Man as an idea just so unique, because it really ties in with the ideologies of Fujimoto. If your work has a point, like a reason to exist, you've already ticked off like a massive box of mine. Not that my opinion actually, you know, means anything in the grand scheme of things, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> See, theming can be interpreted in many different ways by, you know, every individual ever. That's kind of the point of art. <laughs> and it's like, it, it's there's so much to unpack from this series because it's not one dimensional. And I don't think you should have something that's one dimensional because it doesn't bring forth, you know, everything important, you know, and substantial about the show. And that's what makes it so good because Fujimoto absolutely cracks down on this and does that. See, we're already introduced to the tone of Chainsaw Man in the first arc, which any first chapter should hope to accomplish in any medium. The world is just corrupt, like, there is a massive hostility from everyone because everyone wants to just climb the fucking ladder, the social ladder, and people are running on fear to survive. I mean, it sounds pretty familiar. <laughs> And of course, Denji is at the epicenter of this. You know, when we're introduced to him, he is the lowest of the low. And it's the perfect introduction into what is deemed as important, which of course is subjective to each character. Something that really interested me was the fact that at the beginning, when Denji is offered food, that is still a huge moment for him. Like, it literally ticks off a character goal. Like, that is literally the top of his expectations and desires in that moment. Like, as a character, that's all he establishes to us. He just wants some food. Like, he is just so downtrodden and literally has no hope, no dreams of being anything great, no huge aspirations. I mean, my guy is just happy to be alive with, you know, the help of a little friend over here. This just shows how Fujimoto really wants to encompass the idea of nihilism and just have a character tackle it in their own way. To give someone a reason to live and have these reasons progressively stack on top of each other as our characters achieve a certain goal. I mean, instead of being like, oh, I'm going to be the, the king of the pirates, <laughs> which is, you know, it's, it's a long term thing to obtain. Denji is just like, I want food. OK, what's next? <laughs> you know, what, what next in life can he do? You know, it, it just sort of stacks up as he finds, OK, another thing, another thing. You know, I think that's just such a more natural and, you know, fun idea. Because you just don't know where anything's going to go. You, you have this sort of goal on the horizon with all these other characters. And with Denji and, you know, Power and everyone else, it's like... <laughs> you just have no idea. I found it's all about the characters just finding control and learning to mature in a manipulative, gruesome and tempestuous environment. 
which, you know, isn't unlike how we mature in the real world. As we grow, we learn more about people in general, you know, how the world works. It's kind of like every life experience just sort of lifts the veil slightly higher, you know, above our eyes so we can actually see what everything is really like. You know, everything we experience is significant, you know, uh, apart from, you know, fighting devils. That's not on the cards. Unless you've actually had that happen. <laughs> Even Kenshi Yanezu, the composer of Kickback, you know, alongside like loads of other amazing songs, which has been adapted into anime and like he bangs it every single time. He's so sick. Kenshi was actually directed to make the OP sound like a roller coaster. Just having an immature, impoverished character like Denji just surrounded by all these crazy events. And yet he still makes things a comedy despite the horror. And that has just like melted into the soundtrack and the visuals as well. Like it's bombastic, it's highly stylized, but it's also got some lighthearted charm to it. Honestly, I could just talk for ages about this. <laughs> like, I think I've established the series enough to you guys to, you know, give you my opinion and how I feel about it. Like, it's just so refreshing. Like, Fujimoto has just done an amazing job with merging the sort of flaws of humanity and combining it with this, like, brilliant narrative. Like, it's just something that can carry itself and feel completely natural and digestible in this particular day and age. Like, the manga itself was originally published in, like, mid-2019, and it's honestly, like, interesting because if it came out, like, any time sort of before that, like, way back when the original Shonen animes come out, you know, we're talking about, like, the big three and you know, we got, like, Naruto and things like that. I just think because of the tone of Chainsaw Man, I it just, I can't comprehend how it would have ever worked. I don't think it would have. Like, I, I wouldn't ever see it be disputed. <laughs> It's like we've hit just a whole new level of storytelling and the world really seems to be branching out into what should be allowed to be mainstream. And the fact that this has gotten so popular is a great thing for more artists to be just crazy and to utilize darker thematics and just not sugarcoat things. Like if you can actually translate real flawed aspects of the world and just merge them into a narrative, like you could be genuinely onto a banger. Anyway, that was uh, my take on Chainsaw Man, so thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please do subscribe, it means the world, and, you know, really trying to push the limits on what we can do. This channel is just doing amazing at the moment, and it's really inspiring watching it grow from, like, a little baby to now, and to where it will be, or, you know, whatever happens, and, you know, all I want to do is, like, make good stuff for you guys. Like, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, read or watch Chainsaw Man, embrace the chaos, and take care.